I didn't even think about when I spoke on, you know, Kwame and his family, how many people were impacted by those things I was speaking on. I mean, that's that's generational. OK, I, I caused pain and unintentionally unintentionally poked at people's wounds. OK, wounds that will probably never heal. And I can't take back those words, but I can't apologize. You know, I think oftentimes we meaning black people, we fight each other with our demons, whether true or false, whatever is the worst thing we know about a person. I think we I think we know about a person. We default to that. And that was not my intention. I was not in any way, shape or form trying to paint Kwame in a negative light. OK, that black man is not my op. He wasn't my op when I said it. In my mind, I'm defending that man, but I should have been defending him as Lenard Charlemagne the God, McKelvey the professional, and not Lenard Larry, whatever you want to call me from Monk's Corner, South Carolina, talking like I'm home in the town on why I believe they need to leave Kwame Brown alone. That was whack. Because the conversation didn't even have to go there. The conversation should have been about basketball. Yes, leave Kwame Brown alone because he achieved a goal and a dream that 1.3% of NCAA seniors will achieve and 0.03 percent of high school seniors you know how small a number that is and you know just that's just simply being drafted in the nba if you play 13 seasons and make 65 million dollars you're a success okay if you work 13 years anywhere and make that kind of money you're a success so salute to that man the only expectations we have to live up to is our own that's why i always say success is subjective okay my views of success may be different than yours as long as you're happy, that's all that matters. But we didn't even get into that conversation because my mind automatically went to something that didn't that it didn't even have to go to. And doing that, I unintentionally caused trauma. And since I unintentionally caused trauma, I have to be intentional about causing healing. I'm not about to sit around and have beef with another black man for nothing. Trust me, as y'all know, I have a lot of real enemies who are gunning for me every day. Kwame Brown is not going to be one of them. OK, I totally understand why Kwame Brown was upset at me. I went low. That wasn't my intention. But in hindsight, it was low. And Kwame took it to the floor with me. And y'all be online so excited, ready to see black people go back and forth and tear each other down. I'm not doing that. I'm not going back and forth if I feel like I wronged somebody. I'm going to apologize. That's what I think a good man does. A good man apologizes for the mistakes, you know, that he made. But a great man corrects them. Hopefully, I get the opportunity to do that one day. But for now, I just apologize. And I'm not beefing with a black man who's born where I was born and has family where I'm from. There is nothing on this planet that I love more than God, my family, and Monk's Corner, South Carolina, the whole low country, the 843. Drop on the clues bomb for the 843, okay? So when I say I sincerely apologize to Kwame Brown and his family and the family of Bill Brown and Monk's Corner, I mean that. Only thing I'm responsible for is my energy and recognizing my own insanity. And Eckhart Tolle once said to recognize one's own insanity is, of course, the arising of sanity, the beginning of healing and transcendence. I truly believe if trauma can be passed down through generations, then so can healing. Me, Leonard McKelvey, I have never claimed to be perfect. In fact, I'm far from it. I'm not going to always get it right. The same things people listen to me for, the same things they hate me for, because I talk too much. I overshare. I overshare about myself. I overshare about others. And that has historically gotten me in trouble. But we are all works in progress. And one of the most healing things you can do is recognize where in your life you are your own poison. And last week I was poisoned to Kwame Brown, Bill Brown, and their families. For that, I sincerely apologize i um i remember i remember a scenario in myrtle beach south carolina mm -hmm. i got this girl real drunk and um I fought, just fought. that sentence sounds a little fishy. I, I, I not, got her drunk. I, 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 I didn't just get her drunk. I remember going, I, I went to the sex store and got Spanish fly. Oh, so you raped her. Shut up. <laughs> Spanish fly. You in, they sell it in the sex store. You, I, I'm telling the truth. They, they spell it in the Spanish store. I had to fucking, I had to fucking. So they sell knives in the sex store. store too. You could put that to a girl's throat in the sex store. That doesn't mean it's legal. So I put the Spanish fly in the E&J. We drinking the E&J and shit. So in my mind, I don't know if this shit really worked, but I felt like I got horny as a motherfucker too. <laughs> so, she so, so she was drunk as shit and we had sex and shit and like a lot of my boys was trying to come in the room and fuck her. I'm like, nah, she's like, I can't, I'm not doing that. And I'm like, let you run a train on her. That's rape. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> right. So, if it's so, just one on one, it ain't right. Yeah. So the next morning, right. so the next morning she wakes up. The next morning she wakes up and, um, we talk about it. And she's like, what happened? Oh shit. Like, we had sex. She said, okay, well, I'm glad it was you. Then a couple days later, 
She's like, yo, are you sure I only had sex with you? <laughs> one of my stupid ass cousins was going around saying he fucked her, which he didn't. I, okay. I know for a fact he didn't. Okay. I was dead the whole time. Yeah, yeah. He did not fuck her. Yeah. He looked at her naked, but he didn't fuck her, right? <laughs> so, 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 I'm telling her, no, me and you just had sex. Nobody else did nothing. So it just was weird that she was like, well, I'm just glad it was you. You know what I'm saying? Because in my mind, I'm like, yo, you could have been in a real bad situation if it was another That's a motherfucker. Huge compliment, there. man. A girl just said, yo, <laughs> at least you raped me. I didn't rape her. <laughs> I, did I did not rape her. I did not rape her. If it was any of your cousins or friends who have been raped, but I you didn't rape her because me and her had every intention of having sex with each other. So then why would you put the Spanish fly? I was a freaky, I'm still a freaky motherfucker, but I was really, I was, I've, listen, my Wait, whole. Was she passed out while you fucked her? Nah, she wasn't like. She was like one of those drunks where, <laughs> no, listen, no, she was one of those drunks where like, she was one of those drunks where she was like, oh, like, co she wasn't coherent, but she was up. You know, when your girl's just, like when you're blacked out, like that, don't know what the fuck's going on type shit. Like she was really, she was awake up. and she was into it. She was wasted. Yeah, she was. Her rude. eyes were not rolling in the back of her head. No, 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 no. Okay. She was, was she snoring? Well, you're it was just weird. Actually. It was just weird because while we was having sex, she was. Cause one of my homeboys used to fuck her on the regular. Mm -hmm. Like when I say the regular, the regular, that was his girl. Like he hates me probably to this day. Wait, you so you fucked your friend's girl? That was a piece of shit.